my central argument was that it's the ready availability of automatic and semi-automatic weapons that is the big problem. Because if you have immediately at hand a weapon that can kill a lot of people in a short period of time, uh, what then happens is that a, an impulse, a hateful impulse, is turned into a murderous assault. And although issues like mental health and background checks are very important, and I don't suggest otherwise, the, the key thing in the Australian experience is that if you remove uh, these lethal automatic and semi-automatic weapons, the murder rate from the use of guns does decline. Because, put frankly, it's easier to kill 10 people with a gun than it is with a knife. Let me make it clear, I don't come in any way to lecture the President of the United States or uh, the American Congress. Americans will decide how to handle this issue and as somebody who is a, a long time admirer and friend of the United States and so much of what is good about that fantastic country, I'm not setting myself up as a judge. All I'm doing is providing information as to what happened in Australia and what worked in Australia, recognising that there is a vast difference between the constitutional history of America and that of Australia. The British gave us our independence. We took it peacefully. We had a vote on the Constitution. Uh, it's a bit different when you look at the history of America, I'm aware of that. Quite frankly, um, I don't know. But what I do know is that it's had a very traumatic effect uh, on America and it, 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 it saddened the whole world. There were so many young children. I mean, there's nothing quite so gripping and heart-wrenching than the reality that, um, what, up to 20 children around the ages of five, six, seven and eight who was murdered in cold blood. I mean, that is, that is as grim as it gets. I have an enormous respect for Charles Krauthammer. Uh, I think he's a great writer and an intellect. I see him often on uh, Fox News as a regular contributor. That's his view of the difficulties in America and uh, uh, I'm neither going to agree with it nor disagree with it because he knows a lot more about American political conditions than I do. Uh, but what I can say that in the Australian experience back in 1996, most people at the time doubted that we could establish an effective uh, prohibition on automatic and semi-automatic weapons. We didn't confiscate every weapon, but what we did was to impose a nationwide ban backed by a buyback, which was the equivalent of 40 million guns adjusted for America's population, and it was funded by uh, a temporary tax levy that most people supported very strongly. Now that did work, we were able to do it because uh, the moment was seized. Uh, I was leading a new government with a big majority and we were able to get the cooperation, albeit reluctantly in certain circumstances of the states, but with fantastic help from our National Party colleagues, Tim Fisher and John Anderson and Rob Borbidge, the then Premier of Queensland. It was very tough on them, but they uh, saw the national interest and they supported it very strongly. I think the use of a label like left and right when you're dealing yeah. with, with the safety of the community. I mean, we all believe in safety, uh, whether we're um, conservatives or in the American parlance liberal, I mean I'm an economic liberal and a social conservative, we all believe in, in, in the safety of our families, we all want it, I mean that's, that, there's a bipartisan consensus surely uh, that in any decent civilised society uh, you should be able to go about your daily life without fear of, uh, uh, of uh, wanton arbitrary murder and unfortunately when you have mass killings that is not the case.